The atmosphere in the living room was filled with the kind of warmth that only a close-knit family can create. It was a typical day in late October, the golden glow of autumn sunlight streaming through the window. The family's two-year-old Doberman, a sleek and muscular creature named Bruno, lay sprawled out on the sofa, eyes half-closed in a state of contentment. He was familiar to the little girl, always there in the background of her play, a silent guardian. But that day, something shifted. The little girl, full of love and innocent affection, toddled over to where Bruno was lying. She leaned in, as she had done countless times before, aiming to plant a sweet kiss on her beloved pet's head. Perhaps it was the suddenness of her approach, or maybe Bruno had been startled from his peaceful state, but in an instant, everything changed. Bruno's eyes snapped open, wide and unfocused. There was no time for anyone to react as he lunged forward, his jaw clamping down and releasing just as quickly. A scream pierced the room, so sharp and heart-wrenching that it jolted everyone into motion. The little girl crumpled to the floor, her tiny hands reaching up to her face in confusion and pain. The chaos that ensued was a blur. Her parents rushed to her side, the mother's hands trembling as she tried to assess the extent of the injuries. The father shouted, his voice a mix of fear and disbelief, trying to pull Bruno back and away from the girl. Blood began to seep through the girl's fingers, staining her dress and the floor beneath her. Within moments, the gravity of the situation became clear this was no minor bite. The girl's face and ear were covered in blood, and her soft cries broke into gasps as shock set in. Call an ambulance? The mother screamed, her voice cracking as she cradled her daughter in her arms. The sirens wailed in the distance, growing louder with each passing second. Paramedics arrived swiftly, their practiced urgency bringing a strange sort of calm to the chaos. They carefully assessed the girl, applying pressure to stop the bleeding and stabilizing her before rushing her to the hospital. In the meantime, neighbors had begun to gather outside, their faces painted with concern and curiosity. Whispers floated through the crowd as they pieced together what had happened. Did you hear? One elderly woman said, shaking her head, it was the dog. The family dog. When the police arrived, Bruno was still in the living room, panting and wide-eyed, as if aware of what he had done but unable to understand why. An officer cautiously approached, reaching out a steady hand. Bruno did not resist as the leash was cause clipped onto his collar. There was no fight left in him. Sergeant Matt Duffy led the operation. He had seen incidents like this before too many, in fact. He looked at the dog with a mixture of pity and frustration. We are continuing to see children bitten by dogs across South Yorkshire, he later said to the press. This is a tragic reminder of how vigilant we need to be, especially with animals that can be unpredictable. The little girl underwent surgery that night. The medical team worked tirelessly, stitching the deep wounds and treating the trauma. The room was filled with the rhythmic beeping of monitors and the low, tense conversations of nurses. Her parents sat just outside the operating room, holding each other in a silence punctuated only by the mother's quiet sobs. When the surgeon finally emerged, removing his mask with a weary sigh, he offered a gentle nod. She's stable, he said, and the parent's tension broke into tears of relief. But the story didn't end there. As the girl lay in her hospital bed, surrounded by the soft glow of machines and the murmurs of nurses, the family faced a difficult decision. The authorities had already determined that Bruno, now in the care of South Yorkshire police, would be put to sleep. It was a necessary action, they explained, to ensure the safety of others. Sergeant Duffy addressed the public in a statement, as we approach a time of year where things are slightly different, with people in costumes and more visitors to homes, it's crucial to be vigilant. Stress or anxiety in pets can linger, and it's important that they have a safe space. For the little girl's parents, the days that followed were filled with guilt and reflection. Had they missed the signs? Was there something they could have done differently? There were questions without clear answers, overshadowed by the relief that their daughter would heal, even if the emotional scars would take longer to fade. As for the neighborhood, the incident became a cautionary tale shared among friends and family. Penny, a neighbor who had often waved at the little girl from her porch, shook her head as she spoke to the local news. It's wild, she said, eyes wide with disbelief. You just never know. That's why you should always know who your neighbors are and your pets. In the weeks that followed, the girl's recovery was slow but steady. Her laughter returned, timid at first, but stronger as days turned into weeks. The parents, though forever changed, took every step to ensure their home would remain safe both for their daughter and any future moments of joy that might come their way. Tragic as it was, the incident served as a stark reminder for many, love your pets, cherish them, but never forget that caution is key. And as life in Sheffield returned to its usual rhythm, 
The little girl's story lived on, a testament to resilience and the lessons learned when tragedy strikes close to home. The hospital waiting room was filled with a tense silence. Emma, the girl's mother, sat with her head in her hands, the events of the past few hours replaying in her mind like a horror movie she couldn't switch off. The sterile scent of antiseptics mingled with the quiet hum of voices and the occasional beeping of medical equipment. Every second felt like an eternity as she waited for news about her daughter, Lily. It had all happened so fast. One moment, Emma had been in the kitchen preparing lunch, and the next, a scream tore through the house sharp and filled with terror. Rushing into the living room, she had seen the Doberman, Max, with his teeth bared and blood staining his dark fur. And Lily, her sweet six-year-old, was crumpled on the floor, her tiny frame trembling as tears mixed with the blood on her face. The sight was so shocking that Emma had frozen for a moment before her maternal instincts kicked in, and she rushed forward to scoop Lily into her arms, yelling for help. The ambulance ride was a blur of sirens and paramedics trying to keep Emma calm as they pressed gauze to Lily's wounds. She's going to be okay, right? Emma had asked, her voice shaking. But the paramedics' non-committal answers only deepened her fear. Now, sitting in the waiting room, Emma felt helpless. She'd always been cautious with Max, ensuring Lily was never alone with him, but she had let her guard down for just one moment. How could this happen? She whispered to herself, guilt gnawing at her insides. The doors to the emergency room swung open, and a doctor stepped out, his face serious but not without a hint of reassurance. Is this Carter? He called. Emma jumped to her feet, her heart pounding. Yes, that's me, she said, searching his face for any sign of hope. Lily is stable. We've stitched up the wounds, and she's going to need time to heal both physically and emotionally, the doctor explained. There was significant damage to her ear, but we've done our best. She's a brave little girl. Relief flooded Emma's body and her knees felt weak. Can I see her? She asked, tears spilling down her cheeks. The doctor nodded. She's been asking for you. Emma hurried down the hall, the weight of fear lifting slightly. As she entered the room, she saw Lily lying in the hospital bed, her face pale and bandaged, but her eyes brightened when she saw her mother. Mommy, Lily whispered, her voice small but steady. Oh, sweetheart, Emma said, rushing to her side and gently brushing a hand through her hair. I'm here. You're so brave. Tears welled up in Lily's eyes. I tried to kiss Max, but he got so angry, she said, her voice trembling. Emma's heart broke all over again. It's not your fault, my love. None of this is your fault. Outside the room, an officer stood waiting to speak to Emma. Detective Harris, a seasoned investigator with kind eyes, had been assigned to the case due to the nature of the attack. Mrs. Carter, may I have a word? He asked softly, respecting the emotional weight of the moment. Emma nodded, giving Lily's hand a squeeze before stepping out into the hallway. I'm sorry to approach you at such a difficult time, Harris said, but we need to gather some details about what happened. The dog has been taken into custody by animal control, and we need to understand more about Max's behavior. Emma took a shaky breath. He's never been aggressive before. We adopted him when he was a puppy, and he's always been part of the family. Harris nodded, jotting down notes. It's not uncommon for animals to react unpredictably under certain circumstances. We'll be conducting an evaluation to determine if there were any triggers. Will they have to put him down? Emma's voice wavered, torn between the horror of what had happened and the love she still had for the dog that had once been her protector. Harris met her eyes, understanding the conflict. That's up to animal control and the findings of their investigation. Right now, we're focused on making sure Lily is safe and that there's no ongoing risk. Days passed, and the story of Lily's attack spread through the community. Neighbors brought meals and sent messages of support, their concern genuine but tinged with shock. Penny, a longtime friend and next-door neighbor, came over one evening as Emma sat on the porch, watching the sun dip below the horizon. How's Lily? Penny asked, handing Emma a warm cup of tea. She's recovering, Emma said, managing a small smile. It's going to take time, but she's strong. Penny nodded, hesitating before speaking again. Emma, have you thought about what you're going to do if they decide to put Max down? Emma's grip on the cup tightened. I don't know, I can't even think about it right now. The investigation continued, with animal control conducting behavioral tests and interviews with Emma, her family, and even a local veterinarian who had treated Max in the past. Meanwhile, Detective Harris followed up on reports of similar incidents involving dogs that had shown sudden aggression without prior warning. One morning, Harris arrived with news. 
we found out that Max was exposed to something that could have triggered his behavior. A neighbor's yard had recently been sprayed with a strong pesticide that can affect animals' nervous systems, making them more anxious and reactive. It's possible that Max was affected by this. Emma felt a mix of relief and sadness. While the discovery provided an explanation, it didn't change what had happened to Lily. What does that mean for him? She asked. Animal control is considering it in their evaluation. It's not a clear-cut decision, but it might mean that Max isn't inherently dangerous, Harris explained. In the end, the board decided that Max would not be euthanized but would be rehomed with a family experienced in handling dogs with special needs and behavioral challenges. Emma, though heartbroken, knew it was the best outcome given the circumstances. Lily's recovery was slow but steady. Each day she grew stronger, and the scars on her face became a testament to her resilience. Emma spoke to her about what had happened, encouraging her to share her feelings. Through therapy and the support of friends and family, Lily began to heal not just physically but emotionally. Months later, Emma sat at the kitchen table, watching Lily play with her new puppy a gentle, older dog adopted from a shelter. The laughter that filled the room was a balm to Emma's heart. They had been through a storm, but the clouds were finally parting, letting the light back in. And so, from the tragedy came lessons about vigilance, about forgiveness, and about the resilience of a little girl who faced fear and came out stronger on the other side. If this story moved you, please like and subscribe for more powerful stories of resilience and hope. And remember, never underestimate the strength of love and community. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you.